Happy Sunday. I hope that you might rejoice with me today on a song that you may be familiar with. This is Sing to Your Name. It's by a gentleman by the name of Roger Holland. We hope that you might sing unto the Lord's name. It's a pretty simple song. Hopefully you can pick up on it. Shall bow down before you, O oh God. All the earth shall bow down before you, O oh God, and shall sing to you, and shall sing to you. Shall sing to your name, O Most High. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God. All the earth shall bow down. shall sing to you and shall sing to you shall sing to your name O Most High Cry out with joy to God all the earth Sing to the glory of his name. Oh, render him glorious praise. Say to God how awesome your deeds. All the earth shall bow down before you, O oh God. God, and shall sing to you, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. joy then be in him he rules forever by his might his eyes keep watch on the nations let rebels not exalt themselves all the earth shall bow down before you O oh God, all the earth shall bow down before you, O oh God, and shall sing to you, and shall sing to you, shall sing to you. Most High. Your name. Sing to your name. You are God and God alone. Oh, Most High. I will sing to your name. shall bow down before you and sing to your name. All the earth shall bow down before you and sing to your name. You are God and God.
not alone. Oh, most high, I will sing to your name. Sing to your name. Sing to your name. All the earth shall bow down before you and sing to your name. Welcome home to Downs Memorial United Methodist Church, a place where everybody is indeed welcomed and celebrated. We give thanks to God for the joy of being connected in community all over the world. So wherever you are on this day, I invite you to breathe in deeply and to rest right where you are. So if you're just waking up, wake up into the blessed assurance that God always goes before you. If you're preparing to retire for your evening, might you always know that you can rest easy in the promises of God. As we gather now for this moment of worship, I want to invite you to lean in. That's right, lean in wherever you are. As we go before God in prayer, shall we pray? Dear Lord, we give thanks for the gift of one more opportunity to get it right, to get right the opportunity to be in relationship with you, with our family and our friends, with our world. From the rising of the sun until its setting, you indeed are worthy of praise. You're worthy of honor. So we celebrate you on this day. We give thanks for the opportunity to partner with you in history. To be those who look out for the ways that you call us forward, even in stormy circumstances. Give us courage, O oh God, to look out for the ways that you are moving among us. Give us grace, O oh God, that we might deal kindly with one another. And give us a faith that works so that we might be those who partner with you and who move on just a little bit higher so that others might look forward and know that, my God, you are indeed at work in the world. So, O oh Lord, as scripture is read and songs lifted high to the heavens, sermon proclaimed, help us to hear what you seek to say to us on this day, not for our sake, but for your name's sake, we pray and ask it all. May it be so, O oh God, on this day and every day. Let us say amen and amen. Shining above in the heavens for me I'm wondering, wondering, wondering If there's a light That is shining above in the heavens for me Oh, is a light Shining above Is it shining above in the heavens for me I'm wondering, wondering, wondering if there's a light that will shine on me. If the lighthouse will 
shine on me. Oh, shine on me. Shine on me. I wonder if the lighthouse will shine on me. Will it shine on me? Hear now these words from Matthew's Gospel. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, Jesus, that is, went up the mountain to pray by himself. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were terrified, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come on. So Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water, came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand, caught him, saying to him, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got back into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Here ends the reading. On this day, we pick up the story of faith where we left off last week. As we look at the ways in which God continues to call us out in order to call out injustices in the world, in order that we might be inspired to be those who go out, to go beyond where we have been and to meet God in the places to which God has directed us towards which God has demanded that we might go to experience life abundant. Normally, that might be a route that takes us along a predictable path, perhaps a familiar road or around among people whom we may know. Every now and again, such a journey might take us across the stormiest of seas. Again, leading us to today, where we encounter the disciples being sent forth post-feast to meet Jesus of Nazareth on the other side of the sea, only to encounter an unexpected storm. Have you ever noticed that in moments of great challenge, in moments when you have found yourself with your back against the proverbial walls of life, that perhaps it's in those moments you've had the greatest, arguably the most profound experience of the nearness of God's presence. I mean, am I the only person who's had that experience every now and again? Hello, somebody. I mean, that greatest experience of the promise of the nearness of God's presence being in our hour of greatest need. Now, I want to be clear. I do not believe or would never want to suggest that God only shows up when we find ourselves in distress, when we find ourselves in dismay. However, there is something quite powerful about the notion of being directed forward, forward across the seas of life in order to both learn more about who God is and ultimately about who God needs us to be for such a time as our own. What I love about today's scripture is that Jesus of Nazareth doesn't suggest, he doesn't say, well, maybe you should go across. He says, no, here are the words, check it out. He says, immediately. The scripture says, immediately. 
Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while Jesus dismissed the crowd. There was not an option. There was only a command, a demand, go somewhere else. The disciples didn't have a choice. Go over there. Sometimes in life, we may be pushed into the places we need to go in order to experience what we need to know. Sometimes in life, we may be pushed into the places we need to go in order to experience what it is that we need ultimately to know. And what did the disciples need to know? What did they need to know? They needed to know that, yes, I can be an agent of God's grace, even and especially when I find myself concerned more about others than myself. Yes, I can be swept up in the wonders of God's abundance if I'm willing to make a change. Yes, I can find my way forward. Yes, I can be one who makes God's heart glad. Yes, I can be that one. But oftentimes, that requires us to be more than what we've been. We find ourselves living in times when there are so many, arguably, who struggle, who struggle to receive direction, who struggle to experience the challenge of a command that invites us to go somewhere ahead of schedule, to go somewhere uh, to be directed only to recognize that the director is hanging back. As a matter of fact, is climbing a mountain. We see as the disciples move forward in faith that they ultimately would encounter fear and frustration. They found themselves struggling on the seas of life. Have you ever found yourself struggling on the seas of life? Uh, what do you mean, TJ3? What do you mean? The disciples found themselves struggling to stay afloat for just a while. Unlike the calming of the sea that happened earlier in Matthew's gospel around chapter 8, the disciples this time did not have the luxury of Jesus of Nazareth in the boat asleep. Jesus wasn't on board. Jesus wasn't there. Or was he? No. Yeah. One great work of faith, I believe, is for us to trust that God is present with us even in our storms, to proclaim that God is for us even when we can't feel it, to know that God is pushing for us, is cheering us on, especially when the storms of life are raging. What I love what I love about this example is that there at times may not be external reasons for us to believe that we'll make it back to the safety of the shoreline. There are times in life when we might find ourselves running on energy reserves. There are times in life when you may be down to your very last coins. But that's all right. Because it's in those moments, it's in those circumstances that we can experience something that our bones know, as my grandmother would say. We can experience the promise that God will never leave us, that God will never forsake us, that God will be with us, that God is for us, that God will indeed go on before us and will meet us in our moments of greatest vulnerability to remind us that we don't walk this road called life by ourself. Can I get a witness, somebody, on this day? That's powerful because ultimately, like the disciples, we discover, we discover an important truth. I think it's a truth for this day. We discover that vision oftentimes comes in stormy situations. Vision comes in stormy situations. In the midst of being battered by the stormy sea, the disciples 
caught a vision. They caught a glimpse. They caught a, some semblance of what could be. They were able to see as they looked, but they couldn't quite see as clearly. And it caused them to be afraid. There are times in life, times in our lives when the, the visions that God puts before us might cause us to be unnerved. They might give us pause. They might cause us to wonder if we're seeing a ghost. That's what the disciples did. They thought, Lord, have mercy. What is this? Is it something that's out to swallow us? Is it a ghost? They had good reason for believing such because during that time to step out into the depths of the sea was in some cases to step out into the unknown, the place where people wondered if and how far could the hand of God move. And it's through this witness of Jesus of Nazareth that this prophet, that Jesus is able to remind, dare I say, encourage the disciples to know that God is the one you can trust on land, is the one you can trust on the open sea, is the one you can trust when you're doing well, is the one you can trust when you're not doing so well, is the one you can trust when you're up, the one you can trust when you are down, is the one you can trust when you've got many friends, and is the one you can trust when you don't have a friend to your name. God is the one you can trust when you're feeling like you've got it all figured out. And God is the one you can trust when your faith has turned to doubt. God he is the one who is a very present help, especially in troubling times, as the psalmists say. And what I love is that as Jesus of Nazareth was willing to go out and to engage those whom he had sent forward to the other side, that we learn a few things. We learn that the disciples, again, as mentioned, were afraid. But at least there was one who was willing to go out and was like, wait a minute, uh, uh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to at least ask the question. I'm going to at least be the one who's willing to engage Peter. I love Peter. You've always got to have a Peter in your life, in your squad. I absolutely love Peter in this moment because Peter shouts out, well, that's you? If it's you, ask me to come out and I'll join you. But Peter was still afraid. Why was Peter afraid? Why were any of the disciples afraid? I mean, they'd been in storms before. They had found themselves on open water before. It's safe to arguably assume that Peter was a swimmer. So why was Peter afraid? Well, I can't help but wonder if, like Peter, you and I, there are times when storms that might seem familiar cause us great fear because they remind us that there are destinations in our lives that we cannot make it by our own strength. There are places to which we are invited that require something far greater than ourself and to trust in the one who has said, if you take a step in faith, that I'll meet you. I won't let you fall. That requires a willingness to relinquish my sense of control. Because we got a lot of folks who think they run a whole lot of stuff and only to find out, to discover they don't run anything. Can I get a witness? To trust that there's one who goes before us to trust that there's one who loves us, to trust that there's one who's counting on us. Peter learns the power of trusting God. Now, oftentimes you perhaps you've heard this as a sermon as, oh, wow, Peter then turns away, looks at the wind and the waves and all of a sudden begins to find himself sinking. And the moral of the story is keep your eyes on Jesus. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. 
That's a good moral. That's a good witness. That's a, that's a timely truth as well. Yes, we ought to always keep our eyes focused on the one who sought to follow after God's own heart. That being said, might we also be invited to think differently, to, to expand the narrative in another way, to imagine how there might be something just below the surface, pun intended. Perhaps we might be invited to realize without a shadow of a doubt that not only is God the one who is a very present help, the one who will grab us when we call out, but God is the one who's always teaching even in the midst of stormy circumstances because you do know, right, that there are lessons and blessings in your storms. There's a blessing in your storm. There are lessons in your storms. I think that the disciples learn something in the storm about who God is. I think the disciples learned that if we call on God, God will show up. If we would dare be bold enough to reach out, that God will reach back. The disciples learn by virtue of that truth that therefore they are not rudderless, but they have a sure anchor. They have a sure north star. They have a sure help in the God of all creation. Now imagine the disciples perhaps also learned another important lesson, which is that God trusts us with our time. Did you know that? God trusts you with your time in history. God trusts us. Jesus of Nazareth trusted the disciples. He didn't say, okay, help me pack up after this feast. We're going to send people away and then I'm going to row each of you across the sea to the other side. He said, no, 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 no. You all go ahead. I'll meet you on the other side. That was an invitation for us to recognize, for the disciples to realize that God trusted them to live their life as courageously, as faithfully, as fearlessly as they could. Why? Because they're image bearing creatures of God. And God has given us the strength, the grace that we might move forward and to trust that indeed God will be with us wherever we are is quite a gift. It is the greatest gift to know that we are held when we feel like we're sinking to know that we are lifted up by the love of God, even when we feel as if we are being pulled down and weighed down by the trials and tribulations of our world. And my God, aren't we living in some trying times? What I love also about the disciples and their encounter, their vision of the one who came on behalf of God, is that they learn, as mentioned, that there are blessings both in storms, but also on the other side of storms. I want to tell you an account, a story that my mother shared with me once. I'll never forget it. My mom was telling a story about how there was a parent and child, and they were driving. They're in the middle of a storm. And the storm starts to just let down. It's just raining all kinds of cats, dogs, snapping turtles, everything else too. And the child, the driver, wants to pull over. I think I need to pull over, parent. The parents say, no, 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 keep going. It's pouring down, pouring down. Overpass comes by. The child's tempted to pull over. He sees other cars stop. They're like, like we're going to give it a break. We're going to stop. I really need to stop. The parents say, no, 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 keep, keep going. After a while, they're driving, driving very, very slowly. It's, the storm is just unrelenting. It's coming down. And the, the driver, the young driver is afraid, unnerved, uncertain. I can't quite see where I'm going. I, I can't quite 
map out the mile markers for my journey. We're like that sometimes. Can't always see the mile markers for the journey on which we've been invited. But after a while, the storm let up. After the storm let up, the young driver wants to speed ahead. All of a sudden, parent says, okay, pull over now. Say what? I, why are you going to have me pull over now? I, I was in the middle of the storm. You should have let me pull over when I was in the middle of the storm. It was raining, cats, dogs, snapping turtles. Don't you remember? Why couldn't I stop when I couldn't see? Why couldn't I stop when I felt like I was going to crash and burn? Why couldn't I stop when I felt like I was unsure about what step I ought to take next? And the parent pulls out the car, says, let's, let's look back. They look back and can see the storm. And the parent then shares, if we would have stopped in the storm, we would have still been in it. The gift. And the disciples ultimately would experience this at the end and proclaim with the great joy of faith. Is that your storm. Will not last forever. Do you believe that? I wish I had a witness if you believe that your storm will not last forever. That's a word for you on this day. So you keep rowing in faith. That's right. Knowing that your storm will not last always. You keep moving forward and hope and calling on the name of the one whom you've placed your trust Trusting that if you reach out in your moment of greatest need, that God will grab you. You keep on trusting and moving forth, knowing that it is indeed a great love which will lift you. And it is the love of God through Christ our Lord. Amen. We celebrate on this day the opportunity to continue forward in worship by pausing for a moment of generosity. When invited to take a leap of faith, to step beyond the bounds of our own comfort, might we always be those who dare to say yes, trusting that if we go in faith, that God goes with us. We thank you for your generosity, for your support of the work and witness of this community of faith as you offer your gifts, your time, talent, resources, we invite you now to receive this musical offering from Dr. Philip Harris. How great is our God, O 
all will see how great, how great is our God. We give thanks to God for the opportunities to experience new life, to be those who in the face of distress, when we find ourselves on life's stormy seas, to remember that we are held by one who goes before us, who prays for us from on high, and who's even able and willing to walk across the most challenging of life circumstances, to meet us, to invite us forward in faith, Invite us beyond the fear that holds us back. As we prepare now for this moment of Holy Communion, I want to invite you to go now into your kitchens, to your cupboard. I want you to gather an item that is drinkable, an item that is edible. As we recall the witness, God's love, through the work of the prophet from Nazareth. I want to remind you that on the night he gave himself up for us, for his friends, he took bread, lifted it high to God, to the heavens, gave thanks, broke that bread, gave it to his friends and said, take this bread. Would you eat it now and remember me, knowing that my body will be broken? Will you remember me? I can hear them say yes. After the supper was over, Jesus lifted a cup to God, gave thanks, took that same cup, passed it around to friends, to his disciples and said, drink from this cup, every last one of you. My own source of life shall be offered, shall be offered for you, for so many, that they might find a new way to chart life's stormy seas. As often as you drink this cup, will you remember me and recommit your life to living after my own? And so, in remembrance of these small yet mighty acts of God through Jesus Christ, we are invited to offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's own offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Will you repeat after me? Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. My prayer is that the Spirit of God might be poured out on you always and on the gifts that you are offering on this day. Go ahead and lift them high. Lift them high, that which is edible, that which is drinkable. May these offerings be for you, for me, the body and very life source of Christ that you and I might be that for the world. The body of Christ redeemed, delivered, set free, unleashed on the world for the sake of God's justice. By your spirit, O oh Lord, make us one, one with you, one with Christ, one in service, ministry to all the world until Christ comes again and we feast together at that great banquet. Through your Son, O oh Lord, Christ Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit that moves among us all, the witness of the church and all those who seek to live their lives in the way that indeed embodies a faith that walks out into the most stormy of circumstances. We celebrate because we know that all honor and glory belong to God. On this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore, let us all say amen and amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, I invite you to pray in your first language, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Shall we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not, O Lord, into temptation, 
but deliver us always from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Let us all say amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely, yes, my soul says yes. Yes. I love you. I love you from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. I love you. I really do. My soul says yes. Does your soul say yes this day? Wherever you are, you ought to go ahead and say yes. Come on, I can't hear you. Go ahead and shout yes. If you are by yourself, shout yes. If you're with family and friends, go ahead and high five them and shout yes. Yes to God. Yes to the witness that has come alive for the sake of God. Lift high your elements. We remember as we prepare our hearts and minds that ultimately it's only bread that is broken that can be shared. And this cup, that which is drinkable that we offer, connects us together with those who seek to live their lives in such a way that they know that the God on the dry land is also the God who reigns over the sea and calls us forward always in faith. Let us take now together the body of Christ for you, for me. Let us be that for the world. Take this symbol and give thanks. The cup of life for you, for me. Let us take and give thanks to God. I invite you now to pray with me. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we might go into the world by and through the strength of your spirit. That wherever we are, whatever the circumstances might be, we might always be those who choose when asked, will you go forth? to say, yes, I'm going to go on with God and I'm going to give myself in service to others in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Here we are at both the end and the beginning. And invited, that's right, you, we are invited to be those who dare step out. Step out of our boat, step out onto the stormy situations of our lives. To so step out knowing that we do not step by ourselves. So in that spirit, I want to send you forward with a blessing. May God go before you always to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you, below you to lift you up, and inside of you that wherever you are in the world, you might be an expression of the liberating love of God through Christ our Lord. Amen.